Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a courtroom in Michigan, or more uh, precisely, Judge Middleton's courtroom, where he is taking care of a sovereign citizen who... Uh, well, is no stranger to court proceedings himself, considering that he has been in court several times. And in this particular occasion, he is here on a bench warrant because he failed to show up at a uh, jury selection. So now Judge Middleton is going to end up giving him uh, some words of advice and a piece of his mind. So let's go ahead and sit back. Relax and enjoy the show. Mr. Aiken, why don't you come over here and have a seat? Never know when you're going to need it. I don't know. <clears throat> Andy, I'm going to mute your mic. <clears throat> All right, this is the morning we would be beginning landlord-tenant matters here in a bit, <clears throat> but we've got an unscheduled matter. Mr. Justin Michael Aiken is here, file number 222036, which alleges no insurance under the insurance code. File 222037ST alleges driving suspended first offense and improper plate. Those are alleged to have occurred. On October 18th of last year. Also, the case is file 2240SM alleges no insurance and driving suspended on January 1st of 2023. <clears throat> Mr. Aiken is here. <clears throat> this matter was set for jury trial on Wednesday, May 24th. Um, Deborah Davis is here with us from the prosecuting attorney's office. She had been managing these cases, <clears throat> but she was obligated to try another case in the circuit court on Wednesday, very important case. <clears throat> and Casey Johnson was assigned then to handle this case, and he was here Wednesday, ready to proceed. We had prepared the jury instructions. We had 30 jurors here, and we were prepared to go to jury trial on the October 18th case. In your case, you had steadfastly maintained your I'm not sure, lack of responsibility, I won't say innocence, but, uh, and expressly indicated you did not want to have an attorney to represent you. Yeah, it kind of figures that this uh, Sovtard would go pro se, considering that we all know that these Sovtards are a bunch of masterful legal geniuses, aren't they? Well, that's at least in their own minds, though. I mean, in reality, uh, yeah, far from it. And you also steadfastly remained in your request for a jury trial. And uh, we were here. We had 30 jurors who all took the day off. And we were prepared, and you didn't show up. And so I issued a bench warrant for your arrest. And uh, I said on the live stream that if anybody knows Mr. Aiken, have him come turn himself in. Uh, and that was Wednesday. And here it is Friday morning. And here you are. Uh, Mr. Aiken, what's your position here? Well, Your Honor, I'd like to apologize to you and everybody that was here for the trial. And I, I got scared that day. And I apologize to everybody for not being here and um if, if we could work you know some kind of financial plan something of that sort or whatever you feel necessary needs to be done i'll i'll get done i'll take responsibility 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Did somebody finally knock some sense into this soft heart? Well, I don't know if I should call him a soft heart anymore because he's actually re accepting responsibility for his own actions. Well, until I see an argument to the contrary, I'm going to assume that you have joined us back in reality. So welcome back to the real world, buddy. But you're going to still have to suffer the consequences of your actions. Uh, but maybe it'll provide a lesson for you in the future. Mr. Aiken, have you paid your ticket in cold water? I'm actually I've been trying to work on that. Okay, so once that's done, you'll be able to get your license from yes. the Secretary of State again? Yes. Okay. And I plan on getting insurance as well on my vehicle. Very good. Well, we still have these two cases, uh, which were set for jury trial. And uh, what do you wish to do with those? You wish me to reset them? Um, or is there some... Before somebody? you make that decision, the offer of allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code in each of those, which is the uh, offense that doesn't carry any points on your license. So it wouldn't uh, prevent you from getting your license once you pay off your cold water ticket and um, probably a reinstatement fee to the Secretary of State. Uh, if you pled to account in each of the files, we would dismiss the remainder. All right, that was the original offer and she bent over backwards to make it. So let me repeat what it is. You're charged with two separate incidents, one in October of 22 and one in January of 23, driving suspended and having no insurance. No insurance is punishable by up to a year in jail. It carries a minimum fine of $200, a maximum fine of $500. It requires you to be fingerprinted and uh, it doesn't have a restriction. The driving suspended charge requires that your license be suspended. Um, it carries six, two points, fine of up to $500 and up to 93 days in jail. The prosecutor is agreeing to dismiss all of that, plus the plate violation for two pleas to allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. Uh, allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code is sort of a legal fiction. The other that it is allowing to violate the code is yourself. Legal fiction? Yourself? Uh, I mean, it sounds like he's trying to make fun of this guy now. Uh, but it's understandable considering, well, the stupid rabbit hole he fell down into and struggle to find his way out of that deep dark hole but he's going to continue to climb out of that hole considering it's just caused him a lot of damage and he's going to have to pay for it for quite a while but it carries no points it doesn't get abstracted to your driver's license and won't affect your ability to keep or maintain your license miss davis had made that offer at least twice before and you declined it are you willing to accept that at this point? I'm willing to accept that, Your Honor. All right. Did anybody promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No. Diana, you need Debbie? I just need to sit here. Thank you, Josh. Sure. I'm sorry. You can keep that. <laughs> Am I back? No, I actually, no, I need it back. I just, don't want to ask. I just thought you might need a pen. I don't typically have a paperless, but that's an amended information. All, right. All right, Mr. Aiken, let's talk about that. Other than what Deborah said and what I just explained to you, did anybody promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No. It was all me just wanting to get this taken care of and was all. All right. Anybody threaten you? No, sir. Do you understand that if you do plead to these charges, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury? Yes. I, I agree. If you had a trial, you would have the right to be represented by an attorney. All you got to do is ask me, but you've been adamant throughout that you did not want to have an attorney to represent you. If you had a trial, you'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court so that you could be questioned under oath. You would have the right to take the witness stand yourself and testify, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury 
could not hold your silence against you. And you have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Two, 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 three, oh, two, oh, three, six. All right, were you driving a car in Constantine on October 18th of 2022? I was driving. Traveling. Uh, well, well, did you have not have insurance on the vehicle at that time? I did not. I just purchased that uh, vehicle within a week during that time. It was a truck. Yeah, it was a truck. All right. I'm going to order a $75 crime victim's rights fee, $50 state minimum fee, $125. I'm going to give you until July 1st. All right, now it's time for the fun to begin because Judge Middleton is about to give his opinion on his, this dude's sovereign citizen past. So let's get into it. You have some misinformed, misguided notion that the laws of the state of Michigan don't apply to you. People refer to this as sovereign citizen, but that isn't what it is. There's no sovereign in it. I call it willingly misinformed defendants. Uh, there's no sovereign about it. And you wasted a whole bunch of our time, the prosecutor's time, filed a bunch of documents that didn't mean anything. You were always respectful, but she made this very generous plea offer several times, but you wanted to represent yourself. You wanted to have a jury trial. The irony of this is that you demanded your rights as a citizen in the state of Michigan to be presumed to be innocent, to have an attorney appointed, and to have a jury of your peers. If you got a jury summons, you wouldn't have shown up. You would have said, I'm a sovereign, and you can't dictate what I have to do as a citizen of the state of Michigan, but you're okay if you drag in 30 other people who took the day off work, who were nervous the night before. They came in here and sat around here for 45 minutes waiting for you to show up. And you wouldn't have shown up if you had been a juror. Yeah, that sounds about right. In fact, I'm sure if I could add something to it, if they get a jury summons in the mail, they'll say, oh, this is a violation of my rights, so I'm just going to tear it apart because it doesn't matter. It cost the county $565. Uh, in jury fees, and it cost the jurors probably thousands of dollars to come in here for your foolish request. So the contempt was committed in my presence. I'm going to do it in the other case, 232036. You had been respectful. But that's disrespectful to me, to the prosecutor, and to all those private citizens that came in here because of your whimsical. And I don't even know if they were sincere beliefs. Whoever sold you on this foolishness is cynical. They don't even believe it. I don't know whether you believe it or you're just like messing with the system. My honest opinion is some of these uh, sovereign citizen gurus may believe it, while there's others out there that uh, are most uh, certainly snake oil salesmen. I, they'll go around selling you on the idea of being a sovereign citizen and direct you in that particular path for a nominal fee, along with some overpriced books that will... Uh, give you all the wrong information to begin with. But hey, they're just taking advantage of the stupidity that already exists out there. But when you involve 30 or 35 of your common 
citizens who get dragged into this. It's no longer polite or respectful. And you could have had a trial. They would have been here. It would have taken Mr. Johnson about a half an hour to put in the proofs. I also understand, Deborah, he may have four or five warrants out of Elkhart County, Indiana, and a non-support warrant. So I believe he's also wanted in Indiana. Uh, and we'll explore that. For the contempt, I ordered 30 days, credit zero, concurrent with the 10 days I gave you on the other case. And the cost of the jerk to the county It appears there's five separate warrants out of Elkhart for the uh, same charge each time invasion of privacy violating protective order. And this uh, protection order has expired as of January. This I don't know, but there's I mean, apparently warrants for your arrest. 2022, they've been pending. I didn't realize that those were pending when we were doing all this other stuff. I can contact Elkhart County. Yes. Now, well, darn it. It was Wednesday she sent me that. Cost was 524.05. So you owe $525 restitution for the cost of the jury. You got a sweet deal from Miss Davis. My advice to you is you get a driver's license like everybody else, like all those jurors that came in here to hear your case and you stop driving. Now, did somebody bring you here today? Yeah. You got 10 days on the driving charge. You weren't traveling, you were driving. You got 30 days for poking me in the eye with a sharp stick by not showing up for a jury. And you got pending warrants from the state of Indiana and possibly others from Michigan. You're gonna be in jail for a while. So I'm gonna change that due date to uh, October, I mean, August 1st, not, um, not July 1st. Well, just because the dude decided that he uh, saw the light doesn't mean he can't face any type of uh, punishment for his crime. So I mean, once he gets all that stuff squared away and uh, gets his ability to drive back, maybe he'll stay on the straight and narrow if he doesn't uh, fall in line with the sov uh, sovereign citizen movement again. But, but time will tell if he's attracted to that kind of stupidity again. But uh, knowing uh, some of the people that I know, they always go back into the same routine, the same crimes that they continued to commit in the past. Not always, but some of the people that I know personally do that because it's all they really know. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.